So today we're going to do a project that is probably a solution to a problem that doesn't exist on the strawberry towers. But it's a concern of mine and I have two options that I think could solve this potential problem. These videos are brought to you by our Patreon contributors. Our top contributors are TrueAquaponics.com, GrowPockets.com, Aquaponics.ai, and GlassBottleOutlets.com. Thank you for your support. Now you might recall I came up with this uh, little custom pulley for the belts that the uh, strawberries are going to be hanging from. And one of my concerns is that uh, somebody could pull on one of these things and make it go too fast and as one goes up the other one's coming down and they'll just sort of uh, crash into the mechanism. So I want to limit the speed uh, that those are going to be driving at. Um, it's not quite as simple as just putting some friction against uh, an axle and making it uh, try to turn slowly. You're still having to deal with having to pull it. So you want it to be able to spin freely but also have some restriction with its movement. When I was a kid I had a Mattel CNC. No, not the kind with the pull handle, but the one with the nice pull string. Something you can really wrap your neck around. Do you hear the frog? And when I got older, I dismantled that thing to see how it worked inside. And lo and behold, there is a little mechanism in there which is used to regulate the speed of the record player disc that's in there. So that way it never speaks too fast or too slow. So the way that these things work is that there is a spinning bar in here spinning around this pivot point and then there's a lever system that comes off of that one going this way and one going this way and this is a pivot point. So what happened, oh and they're also spring loaded so I'm just going to draw a spring like this but it was really just a, uh, a spring around this point. So as this spun around, the faster it spun these would swing out and start rubbing them against the sides. These actually had like a, a brake shoe built into them. And the faster that this would spin the centrifugal force would push this against this outer part and would start the friction in it would make this actually slow down. So the faster that it wants to go the more friction that's applied to this which then slows it down. So that keeps it regulated at a consistent speed. So I'm thinking of doing a very similar thing however I want my axle to be spinning fairly slowly so I'm going to have to come up with a uh, gearing up solution so as this spins slowly it will make uh, this spin uh, substantially faster so I can get the force of these uh, brakes to, to come out. An alternate solution that doesn't have so many uh, pivot points is to have our center part here and have a, a spinning bar or you could have a spinning cross like that and then to simply have some wedge shaped pieces that look like this so what happens is as this spins around the force will make these uh, slide out along the edges and as it's spinning around the uh, force then will act as a brake. So these are just sort of free floating in here but still constrained to this uh, cross shape in here. And this works more of how um, like a go-kart clutch or a chainsaw clutch would work where uh, this is attached to the motor that's spinning and this is then attached to the axle or to the uh, chainsaw bar and so as they start to spin out um, as that spins they attach into this and then this outer uh, portion would spin but I'm planning on having uh, this uh, fixed in one position so as it tries to spin it will just act as a brake. Now a lot of uh, these clutches so that these are always held into place 
um, use a big, essentially a treat it as like an elastic band or something that goes around this whole thing. So that's holding these into place. So it really has to start spinning up fast enough for that to defeat the um, the spring and get these to come to their outer uh, shape. So we're probably going to do something like that, but I'm going to uh, first design something as a prototype, print it out, and uh, see if I can get just the clutch without any spring work to work. So this is my first go at the design, and what we have here is a main gear attached to the uh, axle, which has the strawberry hangers hanging on it. And this large gear drives a little 10 tooth gear behind there, which is attached to this larger gear. And then this larger gear then drives this set here with six, uh, essentially, brakes applied to them. So as that spins, they'll rub against this outer casing that's here. So if we fire that up, you can see that this will turn very slowly, driving the gear, and then that will spin uh, much faster. And it's about a 35 uh, to 1 ratio between here and here. So I'm hoping that's enough with this moving slowly to spin this up to get these uh, brakes to engage. Okay, so here we have our 3D printed parts. Here's the base. This is this outer part that the uh, brake shoes will rub against. I am a little concerned about uh, the friction in here wearing down the plastic. Um, so I did uh, design this in. There's a couple of holes here where I could attach a piece of maybe aluminum or steel and then put a aluminum or steel um, outer part so that way it's metal on metal instead of plastic on plastic but uh, for testing I think the plastic would be fine and I don't know why I didn't I printed five of these instead of six so we're gonna test this with just uh, three I don't want to put five in because I'll just make it uh, run crooked and I also got some of these uh, roller skate bearings they're the cheapest bearings that you can basically find it has an 8 millimeter shaft. So I bought some 8 millimeter shafting that could fit into that. So that uh, keeps the price way down. And again, this isn't a final design. You can see I press that in, and of course, it just pops out the back side. Um, so I'll have to redesign this just to hold everything if I know that this is going to work. So you can see that spins. Not much uh, friction with that at all, just spinning it by hand. I can feel a little bit, but let's get some other parts in here. So then this piece, this gear is the first gear that will hold the axle that goes off to the rest of the system. And I just built some set screws right into the side of the gear so those grab right into the electrical conduit. And then the last gear here that interconnects the two. All right, that's going to spin. I'm going to have to put the cover on because just the force of this is making these axles uh, go out of whack and binding the teeth up. So let's uh, do a quick change here. I don't have any spacers, so I just have to adjust my height for now with a couple of nuts on this main thing. I don't want to pinch the gears between the top and bottom part of these, this cover. So. So there we have it. Oh yeah, that's going to be really nice. I'm trying to turn that pretty hard and once you get that up to speed, these things are just rubbing right into the outer casing. So it turns nice and easily. I can just easily turn it with a couple of fingers, but once I try to turn it any faster, it does not want to go.
in actuality, it's going to be up on its side like this. I'm going to spin it around here. And when that's uh, running, then these plates shouldn't be skidding against the bottom part of it. Even in like this position, uh, it spins easier. Except for when you try to spin it fast. That takes a lot of force to get it to move, too. One other design I had considered, and I cut out all the part about the, the consideration of the design just to keep this video shorter, is to use a basically a method of a clock escapement where uh, there would be a pendulum hanging from this, and uh, this would just zigzag back and forth on this weird shaped gear. Um, clock escapements are a whole art of their own and didn't want to get involved with uh, that uh, going down that path so um, basically what this does is allows us to zigzag back and forth in these teeth and it really helps to slow things down especially if there's a pendulum hanging on here now you're dealing with the weight of that uh, swinging back and forth um, this escapement um, has to be able to go in both directions and most clocks, um, you'll notice that you'll have to start the pendulum just to get it to uh, started. So I had to come up with a design where this could essentially auto start the pendulum. It doesn't quite break the same way, but I'm sure if I spent several days trying to fine tune the design, I could come up with something. But I'm just going to use the brute force of the um, braking system instead because I think that's just going to be more effective. This is what I came up with with the final design. Here are the bearings. They're pressed into the uh, plastic. And also some nuts are pressed in. And those are used to um, hold in the bearings on this side. I thinned out the material a little bit just to save some plastic. But that made the bearings a little thick. So they just sort of stick into here. And this has an edge on it to keep them from falling out now. Has some nice little standoffs in here to act as a spacer. And in this area, I removed all the material, and these two rings are um, up a little bit higher, so that way, if the um, clutch mechanism or the brake mechanism hits against that back side, there won't be a whole lot of friction uh, behind it. But so the way this works is I have uh, six of these brakes in here. And then this sits in here. And you can hear them sliding in there because they're basically pushed against the uh, the backside right now. But once it's uh, put up into its vertical position, that won't happen. And you can see there's a little bit of play in here. Let me zoom in. There's just a little bit of play in here. And so what I've done is put these o-rings in and they act as little tiny springs I use these because a they're cheap and readily available and I didn't want to have to deal with springs or finding stainless steel springs and they fit in uh, quite nicely so what happens now is those o-rings are forcing all those brakes inward so they aren't rubbing against this outer uh, perimeter and once this starts spinning faster um, the centripetal force will force these out a little bit and then uh, when it slows down they'll just pop in a little bit just enough to keep any uh, friction away from this until uh, this is actually uh, starting to spin uh, faster than I wanted it to so then we also have our main gear still uh, not much changed with this this tubing will be the actual long tubing that uh, is uh, used down in the greenhouse and of course then the center gear So even in this position, it uh, goes nice and freely. There's not much friction in here at all. But once you try to turn it real fast, it just doesn't want to go. My camera's not fast enough to get uh, 
to show this actually moving outwards, but they really do do it. And once it starts spinning it about like this, you can feel that resistance. We'll just throw this on. It makes a nice handle to grab onto when trying to spin it. The last little part that goes on this is this little engagement mechanism. Just sort of made that as an add-on. Figured I might as well use the existing bolt holes that hold the uh, bearing in. And when this is in its upright position, there'll be a string attached. There's a little hole here, hard to tell on camera and there'll be a string hanging down and so what the plan is is that when i get this turned into a, it's a proper position i can pull on that string and that will go down into this hole here it will keep turning and then engage that and that essentially locks this from turning so if i was doing some work on the system i could engage this and lock the um, trays from moving on me if you're harvesting the strawberries or whatnot. And then when you want to release, you just uh, start turning it in the opposite direction and that will just pop out and start working again. So just a, basically a little safety mechanism in there. So even though these aren't done yet, I'm still concerned, even with uh, a lot of weight in there, somebody grabbing onto these and pulling on it pretty fast, because they can they can move pretty quick, and I just don't want it smashing up against the the top of everything. So let's put our new governor in and see what happens. All right, let's see what this does. Oh, whoops. I have some skipping. That definitely breaks. It's skipping over the belts, mainly because there's no weight on these things, so it makes it easy for them to hop over it. But that may actually be too slow, and I might have to adjust the gear ratios, but. can't forget about my spring for the brake system. Oops. I definitely underestimated how well this was actually going to work. Um, the braking force is uh, making this go a little bit slower than what I would like. So I'm going to make a couple design changes to this and just adjust the gear ratios. And uh, then I think I'll be all set. But I think you understand the gist of what I was trying to do with this. No need to show you more revisions. And at some point, once I finish the whole strawberry thing, um, hopefully I have a, a new uh, version of this installed. Once again, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this. Well, I might as well throw my update into the video now. I've made a change to the gearing. So originally I had a 54-tooth gear driving this 10-tooth. And now I've changed the sizes from a 42 uh, driving a 22. So that makes this uh, run substantially slower. If we check this gear simulator, this is the original one here. And that was driving this gear that's hiding behind this other one. You can see how fast that's turning. And the new uh, 42 gear is this one driving this 22 tooth gear. So just looking at these, you can see one is definitely spinning faster than the other. If we check the chart, originally we are at a 1 to 31 gear ratio. Now we're down to a 1 to 11. So it's basically running about one third the speed. So we'll give this a shot and see if we can pull on those troughs a little bit faster. All right, we got that installed. Let's give this a little test now. Oh, that's pretty nice. It's a good speed.